What is up, guys? It is the sports nerd Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio. Good Thursday evening to you guys out there. Hope everyone out there is doing very well. We are one more day away from Friday, and one more day away from the weekend. Uh, again, guys, the Walker Report is part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio. And speaking of that, guys, if you would like to get your own In the Zone Sports Talk Radio gear, head over to squadlocker.com. Type in In the Zone Sports Talk Radio uh, in the store to present the store to get your zone gear. Uh, guys, we are also sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com. And guys, it is the current choice in St. Petersburg, Florida for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace with a new and adding comfort to your life. And guys, remember, Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. And guys, if you miss this show and you want to see it, it's an entirety. Head over to the uh, YouTube channel of the Sports Nerd, Bradley Walker. This show and my Friday show, the Sunshine State Sports Jabber, will be there in their entirety over there. And guys, if you do go over there, please like, subscribe, and share the videos. It would be pretty awesome to be uh, that to happen. Uh, guys, like I said, it is Thursday. And as you can see on my head, I have the current 2021 Stanley Cup Championship hat. On my head, last week I wore the 2021. This week it is the 2021. I got this hat yesterday. Uh, the pin that is on the hat is I got that at the uh, boat parade on Monday morning when I went to the Stanley Cup parade on Monday morning. Uh, the boat parade in Tampa, that is craziness. Let me just say that to you, that it was kind of cool to celebrate that. But again, I do have the brand new Stanley Cup championship hat on. Uh, it came yesterday, uh, so uh, it's been kind of cool to, you know, have the la- one on from last year and now this one this year. Well, let me go ahead, guys, and bring on both of my co-hosts. They are both on here, so let's bring them both on. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you doing today? Good evening. Okay. <sighs> That's better. <clears throat> gentlemen? How's it going? I'm here, Bradley. Okay. Do not fix my camera. <laughs> Yeah, I should probably fix mine too. Good idea. Yeah. How's my hair look? <laughs> I don't. I don't think it really matters at this point. You know, I know. Matter. I know extra on fashion, so I can't tell you. <laughs> All right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're not. We're not on a. You know, we're not being seen by you know million million guys. Go, oh look, his hair is sticking up. His hair is out of place. You know. So yeah. No, you know, that's, mm. that's, so, gentlemen, how are we doing so far this week? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty all right. <clears throat> all right. So, what, what happened here. to you? What happened? Well, he's using crutches. Oh, I broke my foot in a car crash three years ago. I never noticed that. Yes. So, I keep a crutch handy and it comes in handy for things. I see. Well, thanks. No, I know. Well, since All he right. put his NASCAR hat on, I was going to start with NASCAR to begin with. But since he put his right. NASCAR hat on, I think we could start there. We'll go ahead and start there. Why not? It sounds good to me. This evening. Um, what I see, but is um, on Yahoo Sports that a lot of shakeups uh, this morning. Mark Two Edge here is a, the favorite to win at New Hampshire this weekend. Is that? Uh, like- yeah. Uh, yeah, I would not. I would not bet against Martin Truex uh, <laughs> tomorrow. Or Sunday, I should say. Okay. I don't want to mess with Turex. Uh, I like Harvick. I like Truex. And Denny Hamlin. I know those have got to be your favorites. Uh, I would take Larson uh, as an outside. I wouldn't say long shot, but he'd be the next one I would go with. You know, flip a coin that one between Turex and Hamlin. Hmm. Turex, Hamlin, Harvick. They're all good. Harvick's Harvick won there four or five times. Hamlin's won there three or four times. And I yeah. think Truex has won there twice now. We're dealing heavyweights of Andy now. Of NASCAR, rather. Mm. <laughs> it, it looks like the top five are Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Bush, and Brad Skilowski are the top five. Good choices. Would, choices. This weekend. I wouldn't put money on Keselowski right now. Yeah, you're probably right. 
Well, he's a la- he's in a lame duck season Harvick at this point. Harvick and Blaney are good mid tier. Why is he not uh, season? I, I forgot why. He's leaving uh, Roush at or sorry, he's leaving Penske at the end of the year. Aha. Uh-huh. Yeah, That's- that was announced this morning. It's official. Oh. He is leaving Roush, uh, leaving Penske. Suppose uh, suspectedly heading where's to he ha- uh, where's he head then? Roush. Roush. And he's going to take over an ownership stake in Roush. Of course. That's what he wanted. That's why Penske's letting him go, because he wanted an ownership stake, and Penske doesn't have an ownership stake available. I knew there was something behind it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Always having. That was actually pretty. That was actually one of the articles I had up to talk about was him leaving. I figured as much, because that was, that was the big breaking news of the day. Austin Sendrick? Sendrick. Cedric, yeah, he's going to be his replacement. Yeah. Well, his 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 dad is uh, president of Penske, so I mean. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that would fit well. Nepotism, okay. nepotism never hurts. <laughs> Doesn't help us. No, don't no, do me wrong. I, I, he's earned. He's he's done everything he's supposed to. He's, he's absolutely 100%, in my opinion, earned that right and earned that right. I am disappointed for Matt Benedetto that he didn't get a shot at the two. Um, I would have loved to have seen him get a get a, t- a shot at the two, but I understand I understand putting Cendric in the car. I mean, he's won a half a dozen, I mean a, a dozen or so Xfinity races in the last handful of years. He, he's he's shown a lot of promise in the um, handful of Cup starts that he's made this year. So I don't have any problem with them putting him in the car. The password is nepotism. He, he right? <laughs> True, a little. He's only twenty, dude. Yeah. Holy hell! Talk about a young gun. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. He's a. He's the reigning at Xfinity Series title winner, uh, and he has twelve wins in five years in. Xfinity. So he's averaging two wins a year. He's then he's earned the ride, right? Mm-hmm. Outright then at that point. When you're winning that many races, mm-hmm. you've, earned, you've mm-hmm. earned that ride. Even if even if you're, you know <laughs> even if you have ownership your ownership is your family, you still yeah. earn that, you still earn that ride. Yeah. Even yeah, if you even if you have familial ties to ownership. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta have the keys. It week. just some sometimes, you know. I know a lot of guys, what they call pay drivers, guys with money who oh, yeah. who want to go race. You know, their dad had money and, you know, the dot com boom. Right. And so they want to go racing, you know. And so they're, you know, they're what they call pay drivers, guys like um, Riley Herbst and other other guys like that, for want of an example. Their only reason they're out there is because they uh, have money. They, they and they can and they right. can put their own money up. You know, Austin Sindrick's dad may be the um, president of Penske, but he's not. It's not like the only reason he's getting the ride is because of who his dad is. Of course. So, Sindrick's getting the two next. He just frees it. I think it's my mistake. He's leaving this one. That used to be Tony Stewart tried a long time ago, right? No, that no. Uh, I misspoke. He's he's Harrison Burton is leaving the twenty Xfinity ride. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, and he's getting the twenty one at the Wood Brothers next season. And um, so that leaves Matt. But then to Benedetto, the odd man out. Um, I there, I I could see him landing a couple of places. I could see him getting the second ride at twenty three eleven racing if they don't want to go with Kurt Busch. They don't want to go with a veteran. Uh, I could see him getting the second splitting time at the second. Um. Uh. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, Spire. No, not Spire. Uh, uh, what is their name? They're the new team. 
the new team that's not uh Colleg. That's the word. Okay. Uh splitting time with Colleg Racing and the uh in their in their second ride with AJ Allmendinger. Uh running running the races that uh, running the road course running the races that Allmendinger isn't running. So he Allmendinger is scheduled to run all of the road courses next year. So he would run the races that aren't Aren't road course races, so it'd be like twenty nine races potentially, uh, or some of the other underfunded teams. He could also end up being the second ride. It, um, he could. I could see him ending up at at Stewart Haas Racing if Smithfield doesn't want to bring back Eric Amarola, or I could see him going to. Um, I could. I could see if Trackhouse wants to keep. It decides they want Kurt Busch. I could see him going to twenty three eleven racing and being the second driver there. Yeah. Or he could aspire motorsports and be and be a part time driver in the seventy seven next year. And a lot of that has to do with uh, whether or not we have practice and qualifying next year. See, the problem is this year is that you you only have uh, you don't have practice and qualifying. So you don't have a chance to qualify. Right. So. How do they determine who go, who starts who starts at the pole? It's based on speed, uh, finishing order, and there's a couple other metrics that they use for determine who gets the pole. Uh, yeah, that's interesting how they don't. I mean, yeah, hopefully they do bring back. Practice. Yeah buying next year uh, ideally for me though i think the perfect idea would be you have a 50 minute practice from 9 until 10 everybody come in cool off, shut it down from 10 to 11 or from 11 to, to noon you have a 50 minute qualifying session it be sunday and you adjust times accordingly based on when you're racing and then you, so and then from noon to two, you have a cool down period. Mm-hmm. Fire back up at two o'clock and go racing. That would be that you know because the the teams really like the one day shows, and I don't blame them. It's nice to you know not have to be in you know so you got to get all your stuff from Charlotte to Sonoma. That's the longest trip that we have in Charlotte's in yeah. terms of miles. Charlotte Sonoma, and I think it's some two thousand nine hundred or eight hundred nine hundred two thousand. 98 miles from Sino- from Charlotte, North Carolina to Sonoma, California. Ah, uh, that's pretty far. Uh, yeah, it's it, and and then you've got to load up two cars. So you got and then you got to load up all the gear for two cars plus your team. You got to drive from north and you can't, you know, you can't fly that stuff out there. It's all got to be driven. Uh. Then you got to fly the team out there. Put them up in a hotel for four or five nights. The team will be there from set from Thursday through Sunday night. The driver might not come in, and, well, and the driver will be there from um, Friday at the at the latest. He'll be there Friday through Sunday. You got to put them all up in hotel rooms, or put them up in the camping, you know, in their in their motor home. And so I understand the team's not wanting to shell out all that money to put up put up their guys for three or four days. So to me, the perfect solution would be to have a one day show, practice in the morning, qualifying in the early afternoon, and have the race in the early in the in the mid afternoon. You you still get your one day show. Everything is condensed down, but you still have practice and qualifying. It might end up coming down to that because it can cut costs on travel costs. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. So, yeah, I wouldn't be very, very surprised. Not really NASCAR related, but I did see something today that F1 um, is reviewing a new 2020 um, car. Right. Part of their regular. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're introducing an all new car next year and, and, and new tires, too. 
that will uh, change the F1 uh, landscape a little bit. Next yeah, year. hopefully for the better. Um, F1 has, I have a hard time watching F1. It is so. Yeah. If you have a car, you have a car. And it's the top three, and you got three laps, and then you just ride for ride until it's over. Okay. And you hope you, you might um, – uh, you hope you catch a – you can catch them out on pit strategy and make up time in the pits. But so much of – it's just – um. It, it, it's not just any it's it's all motorsports it's it's so much just riding and waiting right yeah and um you know and it's so hard to pass especially on the on the f1 circuits there are hardly any passing zones so if you can get out to a two or three second lead you, you're pretty much you're pretty much in the clear for the rest of the race and you're just lengthening it out lap after lap mm-hmm and if you, as long as you've run, as long as you got your, you know, and then it, and then it comes down to tire strategy. Yeah. And are you, what, what tire, what tire compound are you running? And there's the three primaries are a hard tire, which is the longest, most durable tire, but it's the slowest, a medium tire, which is the most balanced between um, speed and uh, durability, and then you have the soft, which is the fastest tire, but it's the least durable and la- uh, lasts the f- short, shortest amount of laps. And um, if you make the wrong pit call, it can have disastrous effects. Um, and without, and when there's not, um, without having, with when you don't have cautions that bunch everybody back up, one wrong call can be the difference between winning a race and losing a race. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of the strategy with in, in any motorsport type of thing when you come down to yeah. stops, when to stop, what to do, yeah. change tires, fuel, whatever, change two tires instead of changing all four. Yeah. You know, so it comes down. Four, to, two, no tires, yeah, fuel only. Crew chief to say, okay. There's a... And the driver, obviously, the driver would know better. There's than a anybody. lot of math involved. Yep. The driver would know it from anybody. If the, if um, the, you know, sliding all over the track, it's time to get tires, and you know they know that. Watching Days of Thunder, you <laughs> kind of get the gist of what they were. Remember, talking. control is illusion, you egomaniac. That's right. <laughs> I just uh, I don't think NASCAR would appreciate you dipping ice cream all over the track. <laughs> Honey, it's vanilla. Not even if it's vanilla. Mm. Hardy pooper. <laughs> but no, it, I always talked about that on the show before. Is yes, th- there's so much that goes into being a successful race car team, and you know people don't people forget the fact that it is a team sport. Yes, and that it's yeah. you know you miss a lug, or you you know don't get her full. Well, you know. Or you cook the right, and you got to get back out of it early. Well, that's kind of what that's what happened to um, Kyle Busch this past weekend at Atlanta. He's trying to get around Ross Chastain, and he cooked the right front, and he and he couldn't. He didn't have the same um, drive as he had earlier in the run, and so when when he couldn't turn down underneath the the forty two. When he was trying to, when he was trying to get underneath the forty-two, he couldn't turn down and get underneath the forty-two, and get and get back to the gas as soon as he wanted. And so when it, you know, it, it held him up and allowed the one to catch him of Kurt Busch. And then when he when he caught him, he passed him. And then by the time that he got around the forty-two and got back, went back after the one, he just didn't have any good left in the right front. He just couldn't. He just couldn't turn it down to the bottom arc it in and turn it down to the bottom like he wanted. And so it's it's so much, there's so much of everything. It's managing your equipment. It's, you know, making the right calls and a whole hell of a lot of luck. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. Yes. I would agree with that. Got you, you little bastard. 
it was a gnat and I got him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's only there's one a... Olympic story, guys, I wanted to talk about. It looks like there are um, three senators that are trying to bring up an equal pay bill for the U.S. women's uh, national soccer team. Uh-huh. Uh, been reintroduced uh, ahead of the Olympics, obviously. Um, and Bradley Beal is not going to play for Team USA due to COVID nineteen protocol. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, yeah. They're going to have to replace him with somebody. I heard that. I mean, uh, we, can, we can talk about how the men's basketball team lost two games in a row before they got their first win. Yeah, and and, and two exhibition games. Thankfully, they were exhibition games. Right. That's true. <laughs> I uh, to lose to Nigeria and Australia back to back like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, they were nothing more than um, tune-up games. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, but but think about this: they don't have Steph Curry, they don't have LeBron James. I mean, right. they have better NBA players are at home. Um, I mean, Damian Lillard, I think, has been the most solid player for them so far yeah uh, so i mean if, if anything he's been solid and there's a couple of the guys like chris paul that are you know currently in the finals i mean you know yeah so it's uh booker holiday and middleton are also expected to join the team after the finals oh that's that's an interest we can talk about that later that's an interesting series between those two teams yeah it is how that's Actually, if you guys want to, we can parallel yeah, right to the NBA yeah. if you want. We could talk about. Sounds good to me. Yeah, that was the uh, that's been the the news that's popped up. But yeah, I mean they um, that's a very you know Philadelphia, Philadelphia, excuse me, Phoenix got off to you know a good start. They got they won the first yeah. game. Right. Now Milwaukee's come storming back and even the series. And you know Giannis had a great yeah. game three. I mean, heaven forbid. Yeah. He had an awesome game three. So, I mean, um, yeah, I'm, I, I, I've i heard people say it's going to go six. I could see that going seven. I really can see the series going seven games. Maybe I, now I could see it going seven. I'm not an NBA expert or anything, yeah. so I wouldn't know. But it mm-hmm. might happen. I know. Oh. I mean. I, I didn't even watch that. <laughs> I did. I honestly forgot that it was on because they decided to go two days without a game. So I wasn't right. even thinking about it being on. So I didn't watch any of it last night. But um, that's a hell of a block. Yeah, yeah apparently. Yep. Um, but uh, um, I would think that. I it's like Scotty Bowman said all them years ago: "Series ain't over till you lost a game at home." Right. So far, and, no one's done that. Yeah. Yep. No, I said no both, done that yet. both teams have had <laughs> both teams have held serve on their home court, pun intended. Ugh. And so I would think that um I think game well, you know, it's the pivotal game five as they say. You know, it's what seventy eight percent of all eventual champions win games game so, five. Yeah. Yep. And well, there's, there's uh, error. That's tomorrow night, right? Game five tomorrow Saturday. night. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, I was thinking it was Saturday. Another, yeah. Another, so another two game, two days. Two days, days off. Two, two day layoff. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's why I forgot about it last night. It's because I wasn't even. It's kind of weird. I wasn't even thinking about it. Well, I thought maybe they didn't have the game on Tuesday because of the All-Star game. For Major that, may be, that may be the reason why. Is the MLB all uh, could have been. On Tuesday, and maybe that's right. I, mean, I was and thinking, why well, on Tuesday? Like, oh yeah, and people are gonna watch the All Star game, so we can't do that. Now, could we? No. Well, I'm wondering, Lewis, myself, how many people watched would have watched Game Three or Game Four? Excuse oh, me. the All Star game? No, no. The the All-Star All-Star game. Game. Oh, they would rather watch the All Star game. I can't mention why, but you know, uh, I think the NBA would have crushed the All Star game. Oh no, no. I had the past time. I I have to agree with Adam. I think it would have crushed the All Star game. The only reason I say that is because you have two teams in the finals that are not the the, the normal final 
foot teams. There's no LeBron James. There's no Lakers. There's no. But that's know. why they wouldn't. That's why they wouldn't get the big rings because they don't have them. They have Milwaukee and Phoenix, and you know that's not you know you know such a big draw. Even though you got two of the biggest stars, but you know those small areas. That's not much of a big fan base to begin with yeah, either. Yeah, it, so, it drew it well. It, it well outdrew the NBA, the MLB All Star Game by three million. If they had they, the three million. And yes, they averaged a twelve, a ten two, with a peak of a twelve five. Okay. And the, the game four last night, ah. the All Star game never got over, got it over nine. What? Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't know if that was because they moved it from Atlanta to Colorado, or maybe, maybe. You know, you had a lot of people who, and then, I mean, think about this. You know, you had the Braves. You know, um, what's his name? Macuna Jr. got hurt. Macuna Jr. Yeah. So, I mean, Marlins don't like him. The Marlins just don't like him. No. Yeah, well, it's gross. They play in the same division with each other. That's why they don't like. Them. Well, yeah, that's one thing. But you get to hit yeah. the same team seven times. I mean, that's just, just a rap. That's a vendetta. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Did you, I, I watched John Boy Media the last time. I love came. his video. Yeah. I don't know, Lewis, if you've ever seen him. Uh, he, he's no. a good. He's, he's the one great. that brought the Astros cheating scandal to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, but he did a video about that, about the Marlins throwing at him, and you, Don Madden, he goes, "We don't do it on purpose. We don't do it on purpose." Yeah. Sure, you don't. So, but yeah. You don't so, do it. I mean, <laughs> so who do, you guys, who do you who do you guys like in game five? Do you like the Suns? Suns. Suns. Yep. Suns. yep. Until they lose at home, I'm taking them at home. Okay. I like the Suns at home. I like the Bucks at home. It goes seven and the Suns win in seven. Okay. So they'll win all they'll win all four games at home. One of those series where every, the home team wins every game. Uh, yep. 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 Yeah. You don't see it very often anymore. No, no. I, that, I mean that that probably probably is going to happen most likely. Yeah, most likely that is going to. Yeah. And like I said, unless the Suns win Game Six in Milwaukee, and then you know it'll be that way. But I mean, yeah, I could I could see Phoenix bouncing back at home um, on Saturday night since I was going to. Well, I do think home advantage is overrated because not every ser- not every team you know wins a series at home. So. Right. You know, I do. Th- I do think it's overrated. Well, I mean, I think the question was I don't. like last week is: Would you rather I win, to get a sweep, or win Game Seven at home? Uh, I think I think Adam was the one who proposed that question. Like yeah. That. Yes. So would you Would you rather Would you rather get a sweep or win it or win in five? You know, win it at home, whether it be five or yeah, yeah, or over with. All right. I- you drag yourself in the mud. Dude, we're going out. We're hitting them all. Well, I mean, it, I, it is, it isn't, it is the the best when you can win in front of your home fans. I mean, seriously. I, I would, I would, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, having my brothers where where both is an option. You know, I'd rather win it at home mm-hmm. than as opposed to sweep. I'd rather win it at home. And be able to party with my fans that night when it's and when everything's fresh and raw and not have to wait a day or two to come back to to the house to to have a party. And I just have the party right then and there and just get it started. The game got over at eleven. Well, buckle up and buckle on because here we go. Yeah, I, I can I can you know, value to say that that happened with, with the lightning winning at home. You know, you better cancel your – call your boss and cancel your plans because we're going all night. Oh, yeah. Well, like I said, I was at the boat parade on Monday, and there were a bunch of fans out there too. <laughs> so a lot of people yeah. work on Monday I'm sure. in the Tampa Bay area. So I uh, I had to work for a couple hours, and then I got to leave to go. But it was uh, very different. If they have another one down here, I want to get a boat. I'm too far away. Got to get up closer to the players. Uh, right. Gotta go by that boat. Right, right. Um, 
where do you, you guys want to talk about Wimbledon next? You want to talk about tennis sure. real quick? Yeah, go ahead. About uh, Djokovic and who was the lady that won the party? I forget. party. Mm. Yeah, this is her first. Is this her first major? Her second, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. Party captures first Wimbledon title. First, later. Okay, first Wimbledon, second Grand Slam title, though. first Wimbledon. Yeah, she won the 2019 mm. French Open. This is mm. her second uh, major in her career, winning uh, six three six seven with a tiebreaker. I'm sorry, six three seven six six three on Saturday for her. I'm sorry, I read that incorrectly. I did read that right the first time. Six three six seven six three. So it was three three sets. But she did. She was the top seed, right? As a champion. Yeah. She was the top seed. Okay. I believe so. Yeah. She's the first Australian to win the single trophy at the All England Club since Ewa Golong in 1980. Wow. I didn't know that wow. she had been yeah. that long since an Australian uh, woman had won Wimbledon. Wow. Good for her. I didn't know that. 42 years. 42 years. 41. Um, yeah, 41. You're right. Party, who is 25, won the junior championship win a decade ago, then left the tennis tour for nearly two years in 2014 because she was burned out. She played professional <laughs> cricket back home and eventually decided to return to her other sport. Good call. <laughs> wow. Good for her. That's awesome that she's able to win her second. Like I said, the first Australian female to win at Wimbledon in. 41 40. Years. Yeah. Wow. Good for her. Well, that is hopefully, incredible. Hopefully she can keep up and win more majors. Uh, right. So can we can mm. we crown Djokovic the king of tennis, or does that still belong to Roger Federer? Or, I think it's still a Federer. Or Nadal. I mean, you got to throw the – because they all have 20. The three of them all have 20 now. Mm. So – Do they? Yeah, they all have 20. Uh, Djokovic just – with his Wimbledon title, has tied Federer and um, Rafael Nadal with 20 Grand Slam single events. So, again, it, it is it safe to say that? Or you said it's Sir Roger Federer and so Feds retires? Is that yes. Safe to say that? Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. Well, I mean... Now, here's the question, and I forget, and I correct me if I'm wrong. Is tennis done with them? Here, or we still got the U.S. Open. What is anything left? Is there anything left? U.S. Open is the last major. Because they played the French already, right? Yes. Okay, they played yeah. the French. Australia's, played- in January, Australia's in January, that goes into February. Um, French Open it goes starts in late May and ends in early June. Then you got Wimbledon, which goes from late June to early July. And then you got the U.S. Open, which starts just before the last week of August and goes until um, the second Sunday in September or the second Monday, which is just about the same time the opening week of football begins. Okay. Well, that's I, I, that's interesting. Let's say that Djokovic no, is sick. the U.S. Open. Then he, be, then he has 21 <laughs> at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, – I would say, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. But I think the greatest tennis player of all time, at least the most memorable tennis player of all time, is McEnroe. I was going to say yeah. McEnroe. Yeah, what are you not? He may not be, like, the greatest individual. Like, he doesn't have all the numbers that the other guys with the titles. But he, to me, he is, when I think tennis players, he's, you know, just him standing there screaming at the um. Yes. It was on the line. It was on the line. It was on the fucking line. It's just so was, icon- it's so iconic. You know, was, I guess Connors was worse. Yeah, Connors. Yep. Yeah. They didn't like those two. Didn't like each other. No. Right. McEnroe hated. Connor. But. But when it comes to, you know, when it comes to to tennis and and just. Characters of the game, McEnroe is just yes. no one else like him. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, Senior doesn't have the numbers that, that Petty does. But Senior is still considered the greatest, you know, he's just the best. Yeah. He doesn't even have the numbers, but he's still the best. Yeah. 
you know, and I, I would argue that McEnroe may not have the title, the numbers that the other guys have, but he's, st- you know, and he, so he may not be the greatest tennis player of all time, but he's one of the most influential tennis players of all time. I think Johnny Mac probably in the top ten of all time. Yes. He did yeah. win. Yes. I mean, I think his greatest opponent was Bjorn Borg. I think those two yeah. Were yeah. Tennis, um for a long time. Um when they played against each other, it was always a must see, you know, like every yeah. Week, yeah. beyond it was a must see. Um I don't know, I don't know. I mean, no offense to anyone here, but I don't think I was alive when those two were playing. No, not neither was I, but I, I maybe I was young. I don't know how when did they play against each other at Wimbledon? I don't mid eighties. Yeah, I was yeah, young. That was I was I was I was young then, but I had to recall it. Okay. Yeah. So I mean there you go. Yeah. So we none of us were around to say that we got yeah. to play in their prime. Um, no, of course not. Borg's time was in the seventies to early eighties, so you have to look at okay. that way too. Okay. And Mac and Roll was the late seventies through the mid nineties. Yeah. Uh, I was just looking it up because I was trying to. I was wanting to. I, well, I wasn't going to argue that he's better than any of the other guys that, that are considered the greatest of all time, but I just wanted to look at his numbers compared to some of the others, mm-hmm. just because I was curious. And he's definitely up there as one of the best. Yeah, I would, I would, I would put McEnroe in the top top ten. I think he's definitely yeah. in the top ten of, of all. Time. I, I I think I would I wouldn't argue that he's the greatest tennis player of all time. I would argue that he's the most influential tennis player of all time. I would agree with that. I, I you know I think more people were interested in tennis because of his antics than people than people yeah. would have been otherwise. Right. Well, that's what made that's what made him. You know, what he is his antics. Yeah, I know. Yep. No, I uh, I can agree with that. I uh, and as, as someone who doesn't particularly care about tennis, um, right. you know, McEnroe was you know very influential and, and made the game interesting. Oh yeah, definitely. Yep, that's a definite. That's a definite. The fucking word. All right, well, we can talk about golf since there is a major going on, the final major of Last the year, one. the Open Championship, or as some call it, the British Open. I saw that. That is happening over in England um, as we speak. In Sandwich, Kent, England, actually, to be more precise. Um, currently, uh, Louis Oosthuizen of South Africa is ahead. I thought of- it was in Scott. Nope, it's in England, this year. This year. What, what tournament's in Scotland? Well, they do have it there, but uh, they rotate, I think. It's a rotate. Oh, okay. Yeah, they rotate it back. Because you have St. Andrews, so they rotate it back. Mm. They play St. Andrews, I think, every seven years. Every yeah. seven years in the court. It's a it's a rotation of seven golf courses that they play in England. Or oh, in, okay. the, in the United Kingdom. Excuse me, because it's not all in England. It's mm. all in the yeah, United Scotland Kingdom. and Wales and... Uh, yeah. Ireland. Yeah, but the problem is they have to deal with the Lockheed Monsters, so they have to. Well, you know, <laughs> you you let him play through. It's all right. Yeah. Oh, it's just, it's just the monster. What again? Oh. Are we gonna let him play through? Bring yeah, your yeah. pipes. All right. Yeah. Um, and your long sword. Yes. Yeah, Who's stays in? Who has a one shot lead over Jordan Speed? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Ryan Harmon, who are one shot back. Mm. Um, Again, no Tiger. Obviously, Tiger is still not playing. So he's not no, playing. I would be surprised if he ever picks up the stick ever again in any meaningful he will. way. He will. I, I would be very, very shocked if he ever plays a round of golf again. I wouldn't. Hideki Matsuyama, who won the Masters, had to withdraw because of COVID issues, so he's not in the field. Um not, I mean, really any big names. I mean, Dustin Johnson's two at two under par. So is Sergio Garcia. Uh, Corey Connors is from Canada. He's also at two under par. Brooks Kepka is a minus one. Uh, Xander Shoffley, who and Ricky Fowler are both of them one under par. Hmm. I know um, Mr. Cool himself, Bryson DeChambeau, had a breakdown today. <laughs> um, he's plus one. He said he. I want to say I think he broke his driver or something along those Ooh. lines today. Um, 
He is sponsored by Cobra. That's his main, that's his club manufacturer. Um, mm. a quote, he says, my frustrations and emotions over the way I drove the ball today boiled over. I suck today, not my equipment. Cobra and I have worked together for over five years, and they are some of the hardest working people in the golf industry to yes. make an incredible product. Uh, their team is like family to me, especially Cobra Team Operation Manager Ben Showman, who has been there for me every step away since I started my career. I think we were get the words I make. He must have said something along the lines that his equipment must have sucked or something along those lines. I I don't know, um, but he did struggle. I know he went through a caddy change recently. Now, him and um, Aaron Rodgers did win the match over Phil Mickelson and Tom Brady mm-hmm. uh, last week. Uh, that was interesting, to say the least, but they won that tournament. Yes. Um but again, yes, the the Open Championship. Uh, I believe if you get up, I usually ESPN. I don't know if ESPN is covering it this year. Yeah, Golf Are Channel, they, Golf Channel, and NBC. Yeah. I think if you want to, and if you're really into it, and I, I've never done this, get up at four o'clock in the morning and watch coverage because they're so far ahead of us in time. Yeah, you know, it's already what is it? I think what are they four or five hours ahead of us? Uh, right? Five, yeah, five. five. I believe they're five. Yeah, three o'clock in the morning already. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but, yes, they they do rotate the golf courses. Um, and they're just – this is the golf course it was supposed to be at last year, but because COVID uh, took over, there was no open championship. It was the only major that wasn't played last year. Mm. It's the only major that is not on U.S. soil as well. Uh, the other three are. This is the only one that is not played on U.S. soil. Um so, uh, but yes, so, so far after one round, the difference with those golf courses too, is you have wind, high rough bunkers are, uh, I saw them, um, using a low torch to solidify the sides of the bunkers. Uh, that's interesting. You can go on Twitter and Twitter that it's pretty cool to watch how they do that over there overseas. So it's a little bit different than how they prepare courses over here in the United States. But um, yeah, guys, that that's basically yeah. it for right now. We don't, I don't have too much. I didn't hear about any big shots today or anything like that. Nothing to report of then Bryson DeChambeau's meltdown. <laughs> um, today was the uh, yeah. It looks like he threw a bit of a temper tantrum. Did he? Okay, yeah, I figured. Figured when he did yeah, that, that. he said his driver. He, he said something about how his he was his stupid driver, and um. And the driver manufacturer said he's never been a very happy client. Mm. He, he uh, yeah, he, he's, he's too technical, number one. Yes. Um, he uses a lot of science for the game. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. There is nothing wrong with using science. No. It's just that he takes it over the top. I mean, he oh, yeah, yeah. Just, like, yeah, he's one of those analytics guys that gets too caught up in the analytics, don't he? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course, if uh, Kapka was there, it would be even worse. Okay. Oh God. Well, yeah, because him and Brooks Kapka don't get along with each other either. Oh, right. The funny thing is, the back and roll cars of golf. Before the Open started, he mentioned that he would not mind playing with him. D. Shambo came out and said, "I'd like to play with him in the first two rounds, because the first two rounds are autumn. You don't you don't change partners. Right. Not when you get to round three, then do you change? Do you change partners? But yeah, the first two rounds, you're stuck with the." the guys you're playing with. So I'm hoping maybe next year they get paired together at the masters. That would be interesting. <laughs> the most prestigious major of the four of them. And they get paired together. <laughs> that okay. Would be at Augusta national next year. <laughs> that would be Very interesting. interesting. So, um, where would you guys like to go next? I have WWE. I have boxing. I have MMA, oh. WNBA, NFL, uh, Let's go it, boxing it, next. All right. Oh, you got it. All right. Yeah. So we have just heard, I mean, I heard today that they have rescheduled the Fury Wilder fight. Yep. For October. August, October. October, that's October right. 9th. October 9th. They don't say what year. They just say October 9th. Yeah. October. I would assume it's this year, but don't quote me on it. Yeah. I, um,. I actually will be going. That's the day I'd be going on vacation. 
Uh, mm. That day I used to go on vacation to go to Orlando, so I, uh, I'll have to see if I can go to a bar and catch the catch the fight. Um, yes. Right. I'm joining you. Um, oh my God. We, of course, all know why it got canceled or why it shouldn't get canceled. Got yes, 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 of course. Over yeah. Because of the whole COVID uh, thing in Fury's camp. Right. Um, uh, but, yes, the fight has been rescheduled for that. Um, it's that second Saturday. It's the second Saturday in August. October. October. Yeah, that too. <laughs> One of them months. Yeah. August Burke. It's been a long month. It's been a long day. And yeah, here. you guys, uh, mm. you guys hear the bet by Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley in their fight. Mm. If Tyron loses, he has to get a I love Jake Paul tattoo. Oh, come on. That's the that's the bet right there. That's the and bet. if and what if if Paul loses, does he have to get a I love Yeah, I love Tyson or Woodley or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. though he doesn't yeah, right. <laughs> oh, Paul wins. And if it draws, if it's a draw, we have to wear it. <laughs> yeah. Right. And that's coming up in the uh let's see, that comes up in the next few weeks, right? Yeah. The 29th? That's <laughs> the of July or August? Uh it's August. August 29th. So that's a month Okay, cool. Away. Couple so months, month, couple weeks. Yeah. Hopefully I can put the money together to watch that fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that. And Guys, did, does this sound weird? Lamar Odom, the former NBA player, signed a new in-ring contract to box. I didn't okay. even know. Uh, I'm gonna open the. Why? I, I don't know. I'm just. I'm. At, I, I don't know that either. I this popped up the other day, and I thought I would bring it up. He wasn't he says, much of a basketball player. I can imagine what he's gonna be in the boxing ring. Former Los Angeles Laker for Lamar Odom enjoyed his first taste of boxing so much he's going back in the ring again. Odom signed a contract for another fight, too. He doesn't have an opponent yet, according to TMZ. Despite that, Odom has a date for his next fight, which will take place on October 10th. Odom doesn't That's have a much Sunday? experience as a boxer. He, uh, yes. he did win his only bout, taking down pop star Aaron Carter in a fight that did not look anything close to professional level. Okay, so he's been in celebrity of boxing. Course. Not really anything. Um, anything so to write home about, no. Uh, Odom and Carter are just one example of celebrities and YouTube stars taking over the boxing world. Jake and Logan Paul continue to make headlines in the arena while the quality of their fights are higher than what Odom and Carter provided. Experts uh, haven't been impressed with the Paul brothers uh, bring to the ring, which I don't know why, but that's you know, it is what it is. Uh, outside the ring is a different story with apologies or YouTube props. In the so there you go with that. Um, so yeah, I guess. Hey, if he's having fun, more power to him. I don't yeah, have I any problem. Yeah, I, uh, I, I don't have any problem with him. If he wants to get back in there and do it again, go for it. You know. I mean, if it's keeping him clean and he's having a good time, then. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I agree with that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, like I said, if you can keep keep him uh, off drugs and alcohol, what the hell? I mean, yeah. All right. But that's what. Uh, you almost killed him a few years ago. Yeah. Right? Seems... Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't understand why people are so mad. It, it's not like it's not like, like these random boxing matches are going to take people. Oh, no, well, I'm not watching any boxing. They're just having fun. Yeah, but it's a joke. Yeah, but it's not hurting anything. It's yeah, not but... like people are going, well, I'm not watching Wilder Fury because Jake Paul is fighting a potato. Yeah. A big potato or a mashed potato? Uh, just a potato. Oh. An actual potato. Wait, I, got, I got Jake Paul fights Mr. Potato, Mr. potato. Head. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I got Celebrity death man, boxing death man. <laughs> <laughs> Come see the fire of the century on celebrity right. death live. Are we okay. gonna have? Are we gonna have uh, Mills Lane as the uh, referee there? Like, Is he still alive? I don't know. I don't know if he's still alive or not. It's a good question. I'm not sure. I'm not really but, sure. But um, can we get Michael Buffer to do the do the announcing. <laughs> yeah, that would be fine. With if me. not, we'll get Bruce Buffer. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, let's get ready to rumble. Oh, boy. <laughs> but, no, I think that, I, I, you know, any, you know, they're still putting on boxing matches. Yeah. It's not like they're, it's not like they're, they're not, put, they're not, they're actual boxing matches. And I don't feel like it's a gimmick. Like the, like oh. people were like g- giggling, we're all funny. Oh, ha, ha, ha. When the when the NFL signed a deal to put a game on Nickelodeon, put a playoff game on Nickelodeon, it was yeah. the most utter trash thing that I have ever had the displeasure of witnessing. It was pathetic, and it was talk. You want to talk about unprofessional? That was unprofessional. It was utter well, nonsense. Well, don't forget they're they're in a joint company with CBS. So that's why they did it. And, and they're they're it was to appeal to the kids. Well, if they're not watching the game on the regular channel, they're not going to watch the game on Nickelodeon. And we'll watch the game on Nickelodeon, and then when it, next week when it's back on regular TV and there isn't the goofy antics and the silly, stupid shit, they're going to turn it off. Hmm. If you're not watching the product that's on every week, you're not going to tune in for a special. Right. You tune in for one special, and then when that's over, you turn it off, and you go about doing whatever else you were doing anyway. Well, I mean, I, I think too that it was the Chicago Bears and the Saints. So yeah, the, you know, yeah, the only people that were really paying attention to that were the fans of those two teams, right? And just your regular, and then right, the football-starved masses that are ravenous for football. I, I, I think I watched the game, but not on not on Nickelodeon. I watched no, I watched I watched a, I watched a very little bit of it on Nickelodeon, okay. just enough to see that it was just. When I was a kid, it would have done absolutely nothing for me. Mm-hmm. It would have done absolutely nothing for me. It was stupid and juvenile, and un, I I tune in for to for you know even when I was a kid. I'm, I'm not I'm not talking. 18 or, you know, I'm not talking 16 or, or 18. I'm talking about when I was 9 and 10 years old. I tuned into professional sports to watch professionals do what they do best. Yes. And I would have been totally turned off by it. I would have been like, what is this shit? Well, obviously I wouldn't have said that, but you know. I would. <laughs> but, but. You know, and I, I would have been like. Yeah, I, I again. I, I'll translate. What the hell what was is, that? Is you know, I, I don't know. I buffered there for a second. Yeah. No, but that might be my reaction. I, I don't mean you freezing up, but that was my reaction. I'm like, what the hell was that? Right. Even when I was a kid, even when I was nine and ten and eleven years old, I've been like, this is stupid. <laughs> this is so juvenile and image. Sure, slimed. That was dumb enough when they were doing it on regular on the on their dumb show. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that I don't think that he has any any appeal to kids who are no interested in sports. You know, kids that are actually interested in sports and watch sports anyway don't need gimmicks, don't need tricks, don't need you know. No, they don't. And and. To me, that would have been, a, you know, if that had been a, a common thing 20 years ago, it would have been a turnoff. Yeah. When I was a kid, you know, when I was 8, 9, 10 years old, if the Nickelodeon game had have been a thing, I'd have been like, I don't want to watch this. I want to watch, you know, Al Michaels and John Madden or, you know, Kenny Albert and Sarah Goose. I, I was watching a game from – uh, I love Kenny Albert. Don't you knock my Kenny Albert now. Man. Jack, oh, we got a big trade in baseball. Jack Ooh. Peterson going to the Braves. Yeah, I just, I is that I just saw that break. Is that is that just now breaking, or has that been around? Has it been out for a minute? Yeah, I think it just broke, but I just saw it on my phone as wow. I was. I just saw it on the ticker. I was watching. I've got sunlight in the back as I'm sitting here Needed talking now. to each. Um, and Mel um, Clean is still alive, by the way. He's 83 years old, but he's okay. Still- Wow. Right. I saw we can... right when I was looking it up. Yeah, that trade just just went down. Just went down. 
I was like, I hadn't seen it yet. I was like, maybe I missed it. I was like, maybe it happened while I was at work, and I just hadn't seen it yet. That's an interesting move. Yeah. Honestly, if I was the uh, Braves, I would, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this this year with Acuna being out now. Yeah. I don't know how much I'd really want to load up and go after it at this point. It's kind of you make your bed and lie in it type of deal. Right. Well, speaking of the MLB, I mean, um, Rob Manfred did come out and say that there will be two rules that will be changing next year. One. For sure. The second, mm-hmm. the the guy on second base during the extra innings will no longer be there, and they're going to take away the seven inning double header the, rule as well. Both of those. They're going back to nine inning double headers. Back yeah. inning double headers, correct? Yeah. So, honestly, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't mind a runner on second after twelve or fourteen. Right. I I I think I I think I said it on this show before. It's like after 12, you have a runner on first. After 14, you have a runner on second. And then after 16, you just have a mascot dance off. <laughs> have the umpires duke it out. Right. Yeah. Well, they were they were talking about that on local radio. Oh, Jesus. Angel Hernandez has just thrown himself out of the game. Well, local radio today about them possibly having a computerized strike zone where the umpires will get the, a ball or a strike will come from upstairs. Yeah. Um, that could be coming you know, in the near future. So as long as they can, as long as they have the right to override and obvious, you know, like if it's half a foot out of the strike zone and the machine calls it a ball, the ump can go, no, that was that, or the machine calls it a strike. The ump can go, no, that was a ball. Yeah. I think, I think it's a great idea. Honestly, honestly, I just don't understand why they don't just use Fox tracks or whatever and just have an ump. You have a, you have MLB puts a, a, uh, Fox, MLB, whoever, MLB and Fox get together and they have a dedicated screen that only shows the Fox track at every game. Yeah. And he's, and he's there watching it. And if it's a strike, he calls down, he says, strike. If it's a ball, he calls down, it says, ball. Mm-hmm. And then the mm-hmm. on-field umpire relays that to the fan, the you know, to the batter and the fan. Just like, you know, kind of like the replay system. The, right. the, the umpire, the, the home plate umpire has an earpiece. And he gets, you know, he, he or pitcher throws the ball. And it's a ball or a strike. And then, you know, then, and... He rings down. He says, "Yep, okay, it's a strike." So he goes up with the right hand, up and up with the ball. So he goes up with the left hand, and and we just have a consistent strike zone for every batter and every situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's really frustrating in the first five innings when you've got your pitchers cruising, and he's getting that inside. You know, he's getting that outside strike, and then. Um, in the next two innings, he can't get that outside call because the umpires decided to tighten his strike zone up. Mm-hmm. Ends up walking three guys and giving up two runs that he wasn't gonna that he didn't give up earlier in the game. No, I I think if there was a more consistent strike zone, there would be no problem with letting the umpires continue to do what they're doing now. Yeah, isn't a consistent strike zone amongst the umpires. That's why they're going to be going to the extreme that they're going to now. And I mean, again, this is all you know. This is all you know. Talk, talk, because who knows? Yeah, speculation. Because there could be a strike at the end of this year. I was going to say if there is a 2022 season. So if there's a 2022 season, great. But with the way that they fought back and forth last year during the COVID era or COVID season, good luck to Major League Baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BA trying to agree on contracts and all that stuff because it didn't look yeah. good. Then. I don't know how it's going to look. I mean, maybe every baseball fan out there, we get lucky and they've been talking behind closed doors. We don't know what's going on. Nothing right. Out. 
that's a possibility that that could be going on as we speak with Ron Manfred and company, but I don't know. Yeah, press X to doubt on that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's going to say. I honestly don't know if that chuckle. He doesn't know whether he's coming or he's going. Manfred never did. No. What did you guys think of the draft? Anything? Anybody? Any, anybody? I don't. I don't know enough about the MLB. No, the Mets got a good pick at number ten. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't. Uh, the Tigers drafted some kid out of. I don't. I don't know. I think it was a junior. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I think he was some middle schooler, and we got ten years before he's even gonna make the MLB roster. I I, I don't know. I just I don't get drafting a guy who's not because he might be four years from now yeah. a good one. <laughs> and I just it, to me it's frustrating. Uh, we're we we we're a bad baseball team right now, and we drafted a guy who's not going to be MLB ready for another four or five years. Playing for the future. And, uh, yeah, I can guess we that, not? That's exactly okay. Maybe not. Can we can we play for the now? Can we draft for the now? Because I would I'd like to not be a shitty team sometime before I die. <laughs> I get it. I get it. When was was it 2017 that they were in the ALCS? That's when they were in the ALCS. 26. I think it was 2016. The Mets. And they they played the, the Mets. Red Sox. 20, uh, that they, was 2013. 2013 when they played the Red Sox in the ALCS. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. That was when Tory Hunter went flipping over the wall at Fenway Park. Oh yeah. David Ortiz's home tying home run. A lead. They were up by three and he had a grand slam. Oh, that's yep. right. That's right. Off of, uh, Thank you for bringing up such a painful memory. Why don't you rub lemon juice on it while you're at it? Exactly. Or watching Shane Victorino around the bases after he hit a home run. Mm-hmm. I'd rather not think about it. I don't want to hurl in the air. <laughs> I'm never throwing up on this show, but I'm getting close. Um, you and me both. Speaking of something that makes me throw up, what about Trevor Bauer's situation? Oh yeah, yeah, it's that's a definite barf. That's a definite barf story right there. Uh, that been put on leave till the twenty seventh. Again, uh, this, yeah, this month at least. Uh, I, guys, yeah, I, I, I don't condone if if he did sexually assault women or a women or a woman. Yeah, yeah, he 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 yeah he needs to get everything punishment to to him. That's not right by any means of the imagination. No, um, again. We don't know. It's again. It's in that spectrum. Yeah, I hope it's. I hope it's. I hope it's not. I hope it's wrong. I hope he didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, me too. I mean, I. I you yeah. know, you'd hate to see somebody like him. He's a good, good pit, a great yeah, pitcher. Yeah, he's a great he's pitcher. Like that. To have him, um, oh. you know, uh, be that way. Um, Obviously, the game tonight between the Red Sox and Yankees got postponed because of COVID. Yeah, I saw that. It's stupid. Uh, and I don't know who the hell only scheduled one game to come back off of the. Yeah, I don't get that at all. But they do that every year now. That just one game. Yeah. Start break. Yeah, that's dumb. It is stupid. It's really dumb. You are so dumb. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a yeah. different game right now, anyway. Uh, they got the uh, they got the home run derby on right now. Wait, well, what if? Would, yeah. And now everything else is done until October. Yep. Correct. Yep. Uh, God, I wish I could, I could go for. I could go for, for some college race. football. Anyway, race. The Ra- oh, I'm sorry, the Braves, excuse me, the Braves, will they shop Charlie Morton? Will they be selling? Will the Yankees no, be apparently Ryan? not. Joey Gallo. Yeah, and obviously not. They picked up Doc Peterson. Um, who might be some potential landing spots for Trevor Story in Colorado? 
Mm. I don't think he gets moved. Some of the stories that are on MLB.com, I'm reading down the down the thing. Uh, I think Trevor's story stays put. I could be wrong, but I yeah, think he should. Put. I think they try to build around him. You know, here here's a funny situation that the Rays go and get yes. Charlie Morton back. <laughs> Morton left the Rays to sign with the Braves because they couldn't afford his contract. When that yeah. means he ended up back in Tampa Bay. Right. The Rays need a number one pitcher. They don't have one right now. Even though Glass hey. now is doing long tosses, from what I heard today on local radio, he is long tossing, which is a good sign. If he needs Tommy John surgery, you can kiss his butt goodbye next year. No, thanks. A year of rehab, and then it, he'll be out for spring training probably until 2023. It could be, yeah. I would think. Yeah, yeah. It covers a lot faster. Who knows with the technology but, they have now? It may not take that long. Yeah, but it's not for budget. It's going to take a good solid six months. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Probably a year. Yeah. Before he comes back. And it looks I'm like not Chris, Sale, anyway. Chris Sale is on his way back. He's up to double A's and they have a double A. Uh, rehab start. Uh, here are seven all stars that could be traded within this month. Let's see if Jock Peterson happens to be on this list. Um, Chris Bryant is one of them. Uh, he won't be moved. Nelson Cruz. Where is Cruz now? Twins. He could get moved. Oh, uh, Eduardo Escobar, the D backs. He could get moved. Adam Frazier, the Pirates. He'll be moved. Joey Gallo of the Rangers. He won't be moved. No. Uh, Kyle Gibson of the Rangers, a pitcher, right handed pitcher for the Rangers. Yeah. No, nah, probably not. Greg uh, Kimbrell for the Cubs. No. No. <clears throat> oh, no. no. I don't see them getting rid of Kimbrell either. I don't. Oh, I don't. no. Come on. They still have an opportunity to win the division. I mean, I know they're behind Milwaukee, but. Still, they still have an opportunity to win the division. A brewer. Yeah. Trade wow. your closer. That's your closing pitcher, too, that you're going to trade away. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, I got a good colleague in uh, Milwaukee. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't go that far with uh, trading your closer. <laughs> Not this time of the year. Trade your closing pitcher away. Um, but, yeah, no, I don't, I don't see that happening. Obviously, the next couple of days we're going to have uh, – you know, trades obviously the Jack Peterson trade, but we're gonna have trades breaking over the next couple of days. Yeah, is the, de- de- is the 31st the day? 31st, I think the 31st is the deadline, isn't it? Two weeks, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will be there'll be some trades going down from here. Oh, absolutely, yeah, so that point. So, be careful, they can trade one of us. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'd be all right with it. Uh, uh, Depends on where they're, where I'm going. Right. There you go. Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland. I'm already in Cleveland. Which one? <laughs> Cleveland, Tennessee. No, uh, no, I'd rather. I'm, I'm going to veto that trade. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's not going to Ohio. <laughs> no. Not on your life. Uh-huh. He's not going okay. You better back up the Brinks truck if you want me to move to Ohio. <laughs> we were sending one out one about an hour ago. Uh, well, it hasn't got here yet. I'll let, I'll let you know when it gets here. Please do. I think he so, got lost on the way. He made a left at Albuquerque. It looks like yeah. Duncan got traded to the Edmonton Oilers. Yes, he did. Straight, straight up trade, too. No contract. Money by the Blackhawks. It was just strictly a trade. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, so just um, a straight up. Yeah, straight up. Uh, straight up trade. Player um, for player, huh? Yeah. Right. Uh, no, um, oh. Keith Keith Yano got bought out by the Panthers today. Saw that. Uh, mm-hmm. Peke Rainey retired. Uh, he Saw is, that. I done. didn't realize he'd been in the league for that long. He was. Yeah. Bring up his pads. Um, Graves traded to the Devils by the Avalanche. That just broke a few minutes ago. 
Um, Stan Coast not asked to waive his no move clause. That I thought was that was you know that's just someone talking. But the I, the one thing that I wanted to talk about was obviously Blue Jackets goaltender um, that passed away. I don't know. If yeah. What happened? Yeah. Um, I guess. Yeah, I heard about that. Fire accident, and um, I guess he, he jumped in front of. Of fireworks that were going to hurt his teammate and his wife. Yeah, so, that's what I saw this morning. Yeah. Um, or so, this afternoon, whatever it was. Something along those lines. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Well, I saw the headline when I got home this this afternoon. Yeah. Saved teammate and his pregnant wife before his death. Uh, Kieslewski died of chest trauma after being struck by a firework. Before the class on Thursday, Columbus teammate Elvis Merkin spoke at memorial service, offering more insight of what happened during the tragic July 4th party. Thoughts and prayers to his family, obviously. Uh, being that he died at 24 years old, uh, way, way too young, way too young to be uh, passing away. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Don't play with fireworks, kids. Yeah, uh, definitely make sure that it's all fun, guys, until somebody gets hurt like this or somebody dies innocently. Yeah. Um, you know, that it's not something that, um, yeah. It sucks. Actually, guys, my, my roommate who you came on here a couple weeks ago, yes. um, he's scared to death of fireworks because when he was younger, someone popped one in his ear. Mm. He can't even. He, okay, so like we go out and watch fireworks in the sky, right? All right. That's, that's you know miles away. He has to cover his ears up because he's so scared. So right. The My two little one the, doesn't. The two times of the year that he's really scared are the Fourth of July and New Year's. New Year's. Right. Day. So right. those two times of the year are bad for him. So. But yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it, it, again, guys, I mean, lots of prayers to his family. You know, obviously yeah, and it's, yeah, that. Um, I mean, you know, the NHL. Of course, the season has ended. You know, now it'll be it has the expansion draft will be. I think is it next week? Is the expansion? I draft think so. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the and the the draft itself is set for the week after, right? The actual NHL draft. Right. So. After that, then I think so. October <laughs> hockey will be then over until the October month when the season starts back up. Yes. Um, late September, are they getting the, I think late September would for the preseason? Yes. Yeah, I would guess, but yep, I would guess. Yeah, I think the uh, regular season is supposed to start October 12th, if I'm not mistaken. Hopefully, the Lightning start on the road. That's <laughs> all being on vacation. <laughs> I don't want to miss opening night, right. especially after winning back-to-back Stanley Cups. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, um, oh, yeah, and then, of course, you know, the, the cup got dented by the lightning. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, uh, I was – I heard. I was, at, least, at least no one threw the cup, right? No, Patrick Maroon said he slipped on water and he went to brace himself and he fell and dropped the cup. Um, the guy that – the handler was right there with him, and he said that he's seen a lot worse damage to the cup than Pat than the Lightning did. I'm sure, but but at least no one threw the cup. No, well, it, the, the Stanley Cup tweeted at Tom Brady saying, "You know, I'm too heavy to throw." So yeah. no, yeah, I just and at least way, no one threw the cup. And by the way, guys, no one in the cup. If you did, if you do know this, there was a dive team ready to go. Yeah, following the parade on Monday, in case right. you <laughs> to the Hillsborough River. Which is where the Hillsborough Rivers in Tampa it runs down through Tampa. That's where the boat parade was on Monday, and they did say that they had a dive team ready to go in case the cup did fall into the Hillsborough River. Because you know that thing would sink like a would a like a rock. Yeah, thirty three pounds of metal would sink pretty damn fast. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so but I guess it's back in Tampa. From what I heard, it was back this afternoon. Oh. So they had already fixed it and sent it. Now, tell me if I'm wrong, guys. Has three or four bowls already been retired to the NHL Hall of Fame? I think it's four bowls. Four yeah, bowls have been like retired to the Hall of Fame? Okay. And it's just the players, right? Players and coaches are just the players that are on the cup. 
players, coaches, players. staff. Oh. oh, it's staff you too. Can, okay. I'm, yeah, you can have you can have anyone you you can petition the league to have anyone you want added to the cup. Okay. Players, uh, uh the forty one games, forty one regular season games, or a game. Uh, I can't remember how many playoff games or one Stanley Cup final games game automatically get on the cup. Okay. Uh, the coaches, the coaching staff get on the cup. The ownership gets on the st- on the cup, and you can petition to have people who are important to the team added to the cup. Right. Like I, in 90, 98, the Wings petitioned the league to allow them to to have um, Vyacheslav Kozlov added to the cup after the accident. Right. And that was granted. I forget. I forget who Kucherov called after he won his second cup. One of the former Red Wings players. Right, right. That's what they said. Gatsuk. I uh, one of the Russian. One of the Russian players. Yeah, but I'm not sure. Well, or was it? Was it Fedorov? I don't think it was Fedorov. Because he was just uh, made uh, head coach of the national team. Oh, for Team Russia. Ooh. Yeah. That's cool. Well, the winter games are supposed to happen later on this year, right? The winter February of like February 2022. Oh, February. Okay, so next year. Okay. Okay. All right. Cuz I know yeah, that's the, coming up. The summer so games I, start Tuesday. The, the the summer games start Tuesday? Okay, so now everything Now gets hold on. I just want to clear I just want to make I just want to make a clarification here. The opening ceremony is the 23rd, which is a Friday. But there are events that are going to happen starting on Tuesday. So before we say thing, Louie, what are you talking about? The ceremony until Friday. No, but as as it's been since let me yeah. see now, uh ninety-two, if I'm not mistaken, they've had had events before the opening ceremony in the summer games. And if you go back to the winter games, it's happened since uh eighty-four that they've had uh, events before the opening ceremony then too. So this is nothing new, but uh, it just seems to escape people's attention. Well, I mean, I, I think it, I think it's right to get everything in. I mean, think of how many events you got to hold and how many athletes you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have 35. Right. So there you go. So that's what I'm saying. So there has to be events before opening ceremonies on both like, both the winter and summer games. So, yes. yeah. Right. You know. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. It yeah. was the, it was the uh, KHL, KHL team in Moscow okay. that he has been named head coach of. That's cool. Well, they stay. Uh, that's where Ovechkin. I is. see. Signed with the Capitals. That's oh, what he said. The big O. Back to KHL. That's what he said. He goes, "I'm going back home if I can't play. In the, can't play for the Capitals. I'm going back to Cali. Mm-hmm. Well, he's going home. So I don't. I, I don't see that happening. <laughs> no, no. Especially wants to break the record for Gretzky. No, no. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think. I think he has a legitimate shot at breaking Gretzky's record. That's why he wants to stay. Yeah, I think he has a legitimate shot at beating his record. Um, I don't. How many, how many goals is he is he away from Gretzky overall? Uh, uh, hundred and some. Yeah, he's not eight hundred yet. So. Um... Yeah, I'm just curious. Ovechkin. Seven. Uh... Uh, he's what fourth or so? Uh, he's only 164 goals behind Wayne Gretzky, right? 164. Yeah, he won't even. No, he won't get it. I think if you play another four years, yes. Yeah, he's 35, so he'd have to continue. He's got time. He's got time. He'd have to continue on the scoring barrage. He is on he'll be our, he'll be 36 in September. He'll be 36 before the season starts. Okay. Well, okay, that's like borderline. You know, it's not that's not exactly old even for hockey, even in this day and age. Right. So if they can stay healthy for the next four years, I think of a legitimate shot to break it. Yeah, uh, I don't actually know how I feel about that because you know I think Risky is the best. So uh, you know, I got kind of like so let's just say uh, mixed feelings about it. Here are the top ten top ten uh, that are currently active players. Um in career goals, you have Ovechkin with 730, Patrick Marlowe, 566, Crosby with 486, Eric Stahl with 441, Steven Stamkos, 439, Joe Thornton, 425, Again Malkin, 424, Patrick Kane, 404, Jeff Carter, 399, 
and Joe Pavelski at 396. Naheem Ocker. Mm. So, again, Ovechkin. Active Ovechkin players. Four games back. Naheem That's active. That's active players. That's not yeah. old, so overtime. No, no, yeah, that's what I thought. Right. I just... It's OB. OB, I think, is what fourth, I think, all time. I think on the uh, yeah, fifth, fifth or sixth, fifth or sixth. Okay, uh, yeah, I was just looking at it. Hmm. I had to pull it up here. Just give me one second because mm-hmm. Gretzky, Howe, and Yager are one, two, three. I'm a Yager, yeah, okay, and then Hall and De- Dion. Oh, that's a name I haven't heard. He's a goal behind Dion, eleven goals behind Hall, okay. and thirty some behind, thirty six behind Brett. Brett. Brett Hall. Yeah. Game winner in the nineteen ninety nine. Yep. Should not have counted. You wouldn't believe that. They beat the Sabers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Dominic Gosh and Dominic Gosh was cursing and checking oh, cool. when that happened. Yeah, I think he was cursing in several languages at that. I know, point. I know, I saw it. I saw what happened. Like, and he was like, "Oh, what's this guy pissed? Like, Dominic, it's over. Go home. Come on, I haven't been with my wife in three in three weeks. Let's go." <laughs> Gretzky was nothing but a scoring machine. Yes, I was my wife and kids in three in two weeks. Come on, I gotta go home already. One hundred twenty-five, yeah. huh? So he's, you said, buddy's fifth overall on that list? Uh, fifth or sixth. Let me go back here. Sorry, I, w- I was looking at the other stats here. I got caught up. He is sixth right now. He'll pass Dion and Hall, and he's got a shot at Yager, but he won't pass. I don't see him scoring 72 goals this year. No. He'd no. have to score 72 to get past Howe. I could see him scoring anywhere from 35 to 40 this year. Yeah. That that's seems trouble. to be what he. If he can trouble. do it over the next four years, he'll have that record. Yeah, like I said, he uh, has- let's see. He's yeah, he's played sixteen seasons, and he scored one hundred and thirty goal. He scored seven hundred and thirty. So we can do the math. We have the technology. We can rebuild him. He's averaging forty five and a and six point two five goals per year. Not bad. So we'll just round that up to 46. Okay. And he would catch him in three years. Okay. At the going rate. Yeah, three and a half years. If he continues to produce at his current as current average, he would catch him in three years, three and a half years. Going the current rate, yes. I would say I I don't see him slowing down. I mean, obviously, I don't know. We'll catch up to him sooner or later, but right. Um, and that's not to say that he won't play another five or ten years. Right. Correct. Ten, I doubt. Ten. Five, maybe. I was going to say, I think five is more real, real, realistic in that case. So if he does play five more seasons, he has to get 160 goals and 164 goals in five years. Is that what it boils down to? I think so. He if has he 35 to 40 a year. He'll have that in. He'll have that. Again, if he continues to score 35 to 40 goals a year, that's the, 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 the key to that whole situation. Yeah, it's it's three and a half years at 46 per year. Okay. Doable. Doable. Very doable. With that team, yes. The, the, the team that he yeah. had in Washington, yeah. yeah. Unless, the, unless the Washington Capitals go into a rebuild mode, then it will. Yeah. Then it may be not. But if he, no, he, I don't know about that. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, I – but who knows what's going to happen in the next? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, but I know people in the area, so and they're not, not going to be happy with that. Oh heck no, no, there ain't no damn way they're going to be. Yeah, happy no. if they blow that, blow it up. Nope. I don't see why they would blow it up in Washington. It's working. They won a Stanley Cup two years ago. Yes. So yeah. Three. You, three. Three years ago. Why would you? Yeah, why, yeah. Why would you blow it up? I mean, I don't get exactly. That. You know, I, but you know what? They fired what's his name, Barry Trotz, after they won the cup. He went to the yeah. Island. So mm-hmm. that was a weird move. If I ever saw one, right? You know, and how do you fire someone just winning a championship? That's uh, I don't know. A very very good question. <laughs> That's a very very good question. Cuckoo. 
yeah. for Coco Puff. I think I think at that point, guys, I think it was the fact that um, <laughs> coach and GM didn't get along with what they wanted the team to look like, or something along those lines. And that's the sucky part when your GM game or tie. What more do you want? Well, still, you know, maybe that. Yes, he brought us a title, but not the way that I wanted the title to be. I mean, that's right. Not the <laughs> Ask Jerry Jones how well that worked out for him. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's yeah. a story all together. How, how do you fire Jimmy Johnson after winning three Super Bowls? Right. How do you, do that? How do you pull that off? Two. 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 Ego. Because he because he walked because somebody because somebody because of alcohol. Somebody said that Jimmy Johnson was better than Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones said anybody can coach this team and fired him on the spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Prove you wrong. And then he hired Barry Switzer. And that's all you need to know about Jerry Jones. <laughs> he won one. <laughs> he didn't win two. Yeah, he won. He won one with Jimmy's what? team. Yeah. Yes. And then, yeah. and then Troy Aikman got old, and Marvin, uh, Michael Irvin got old, and Emmett got old, yep. and Larry. Um, all right, Johnson. Or, um, Wayne. Their offensive lineman. Yeah, the late Nate, Nate Newton. And uh, is it Larry Allen? Larry Allen, that's right. Larry, yeah, Allen. Larry Allen both got old. All the same, all those guys got old within a matter of eight months. Yep, from from 95 to, to 97, they all got old. And Don't we all shit, right? Well, that's that's the same know. thing, too, with, with the Bucks, with that, that everyone yeah. says that Gruden one with. With Tony Dungy's football team. Mm-hmm. Yes. There you go. So, all the fans down here will tell you that that they will. You know, he won with Dungy's team, and I'm not going to disagree with that. I think he did. I think he walked into a very good scenario. On top of that, you come from the team that you coached the year before to play them in the Super Bowl. I mean, how were you not favorite to win the Super Bowl when you have mm-hmm. <laughs> that in your back pocket? Well, and the dipshit there in Al Davis went from a guy who can't win in a big one to a guy who can't win. Yeah. Yep. That's the sad part. Well, yeah, the, you want to talk about egomaniac owners in the National Football League. There's two right there. Yeah. Al-, <laughs> Al Davis and Jerry Jones? Correct. I mean, God rest Al, Al Davis. Rest in peace. He's, he's gone, but... Still, like I said, those were the two egomaniac owners in the NFL. Okay, owners only. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Manfred is a a big egomaniac, too, as a commissioner. Oh, yeah. Well, Mm. I rest my case. Well, he, like I said, that we were talking earlier during, you know, that talk. I think, like I said, he's going to be part of the reason why they go on strike. Yeah. He's going to be one of the major reasons why they go on strike. Yeah. And of course, of Barry Bettman's on prize either. Well, Bettman's at least safe. I don't I don't think the NHL's CBA expires for a couple of years. I think he's... No, I think they should have expired him during the, during the third lockout. They should have expired him. I agree. I agree. If you go through three work stoppages, you should be fired as a commissioner. No, you should no, no, have a firing that. squad. Yeah. No doubt about that. Yeah. yeah. Doubt about that. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. But Sorry, I was reading about Barry Switzer because I was curious. Yeah. <laughs> I was curious how long he lasted in, in Dallas. He only made it four years. I don't get it. Yeah. Huh. So, real quick, guys, the WNBA All Stars beat Team USA. Did I hear yep. that right last night? That's um, correct. Can you fill me in, Lewis, on that? Because I didn't really get a lot of information. I didn't get a chance to really see it because I was concentrating on, of course, game three of the uh, finals. Finals, okay. But, yeah, but uh, the Team USA doesn't – I mean, even one of the players said that Team the USA doesn't even look like a real team right now, you know, because, you know, they got bought by the WNBA All-Stars. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit shaky <laughs> but going, into the, uh, going into the Olympics. Olympics, okay. Yeah, it's a little shaky right now. Well, here's the question I have. The Olympics start uh, again in a couple, you know, in a, this week or next week. Yeah. Yeah. How many of the WNBA stars are going to be playing? Are they going to leave their teams to go play and leave the season behind? The WNBA is shut down until the Olympics are over. Oh, okay. Well, then that would make sense. Okay. Yes. So they're going to, okay. 
they're gonna give all the ladies whatever country they came you know came come from to go right. play okay that's cool that's understandable okay it makes sense yeah obviously they weren't gonna shut down the <laughs> the nba <laughs> for the olympics obviously yeah um, not with only a handful of games left yeah mm -hmm. yeah out of the last three well yeah first to win two more wins yep yep Win two yeah. more wins. you're exactly yeah. right about that yeah. I was really hoping the Suns would sweep, but I thought so too. Well, I just, I just had, I just had the Suns, and uh, as the um, uh. at the beginning of the year, I had the Suns winning it all. Hmm. That was my second choice after the Lakers. Yes. No, after the Pistons. Yes, the Lakers. Oh, I wasn't sure. You could have been a homer in the Knicks. I wish. Yeah, the Knicks did make it to the postseason this year. Yes, they did. And then they lost badly to Atlanta. Yeah. Trey, Trey Young, thank you very much. Yep. Yeah. Well, guys, I put the WWE logo up because I will be going to a buddy's house of mine to watch Money in the Bank. Uh, okay, he cool. Me. He invited me over to watch it. So. Mm. Uh, <sighs> So I will be While you're bringing up w, uh, WWE, there was a bit of a passing in one of the all-time wrestlers. Yeah. yeah. Mr. P Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful. Paul Orndorff. Paul Orndorff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that yesterday or earlier today. Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, it's sad. Yeah, that's very sad. One of the greatest of, of my generation, that is. Yeah. Yeah. He wrestled in the, what, the 70s and 80s? Uh, yeah, of course, mostly in the 80s, you know, when I started picking. Right, I, I was going to say the 80s, because he, he was uh, he was one of uh, Hulk Hogan's foils. Yep. In the mid-80s. Was was he part of the Four Horsemen? I believe he may have been. Yes. Because it, it was Ric Flair, right. Arn Anderson, and who were the other two? that were the Paul players? Orndorff and... Um, I remember who the other one was. I have to look it up. Randy Savage? It may have been Savage. I know it's something. I guess I know that they, they, yeah, it was, those were the four. Um, I know my mom's mm. wrestler was Dusty Rhodes. The, the mm. train could have been Dusty Rhodes, too. So, again, Dusty passed away a few years ago. Right. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. They're all, they're, they're all starting to go. Well, when you know you take all those body slams and whatnot, you know, and as you get older, you know, I think your those injuries, you know, start start to show up more, and you can't fight it. Yeah, you know, you go the four horsemen were Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Ollie Anderson, and Tully Blanchard. Blanchard. You know, you get a major case of whoop ass, and you know. As you get all the body deteriorates and it takes mm -hmm. it hard to heal, and you know that's know. but there. I mean, this is not this is not kid stuff, you know. No, no, it's not. Well, there oh. there, is, there is a rumor that Mr. Fast and Furious himself, John Cena, is supposed to return to the Money in the Bank. Mm -hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. I don't know how true that is, but that's been a rumor that I've seen on a lot of WWE uh, yes. <laughs> pages. Red I haven't. Asian. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, him and Brock Lesnar. I guess is. I don't know if you saw uh -huh. a thing about him where he was at a meat meat uh, meat cutting plant in Wisconsin or Michigan. I forget. He's. Oh, I'm sorry. Where's he from? Minnesota. That's where he's from. He's from Minnesota. Mm. He's helping uh helping out there. So he's trying to get back in shape. I don't know why he would come back. Well, WWE obviously would be money. Would be that. Yeah. So anyway. Money talks. Yeah. And BS watch. It does. It does. So, yeah, I will be again at my buddy's house. Um, he's actually a hockey buddy of mine, and he invited me. Mm. Like, yep. I will definitely, not that I would, um, not that I'm a huge WWE fan anymore, but hey, right. I'll go over and watch it with somebody who is a WWE free. guy. So, yeah. And he's going to buy it, so it's not like you got to buy it. Exactly. Yep. I mean, Hell, I mean, you you can go to you know Buffalo Wild Wings, and I'm sure it'll be on if you ask them to put it on. 
it'll be on there. They'll 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 put it on there. So maybe uh, I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know if they would. That was one of the pay per views that they would pay for. I know that they pay for the UFC pay per views, but I don't know if they would pay for wrestling. I don't know. You might. You can ask. Care to ask? Uh, real quick, guys, anything, I didn't see anything majorly going on with this league as of, usually there's a big, big talk about this one, but I haven't seen anything in the NFL in a while. I mean, we're getting ready. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, training. Oh, I did see that, um, Brady played last year with a torn MCL in his left knee. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know how he's a machine. I don't know how he does it. Because that's insane. That makes my knee hurt just thinking about it. Yeah. Well, that's uh, Victor Hedman, buddy, played with a torn meniscus, too. The defensive for the Lightning. Mm -hmm. the torn meniscus right. and, um, both, and then uh, they wonder why they're all fucked up at 45. And I, two, of two, of players, two of the players for the Lightning had broken hands. Played with broken hands. Yeah. Going to and, then they, and then they wonder why they need wheelchairs. Yeah. And are dead at and dead at fifty two. And CTE and all that. Yeah. Why do you think Barry Sanders stopped playing football? I know, right? And, and what? And, and especially when it's not fun. Yeah. You're getting out there, getting getting a car crash, forty times a day. Yep. Well, once a week you're participating in forty car, forty violent car crashes. Mm-hmm. Because you're and you're not winning. Protect anything. Yeah. Yep. I don't. I don't blame them for walking away. I don't blame anyone for walking away. It's like they care. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm getting sleepy. It's like that kid that um was wrestling for I think it was Hanford with the bad knees, no cartilage left in his knees, and he just lied to everybody, and he just lied and he lied and he lied, so he could keep going because he didn't want to have to admit that he was hurt. And then he was in pain, and they didn't want to come out of the game. And he was a wrestler. He didn't want to come out of the match. So he just sucked it up and dealt with it. And it's like, you know, I was thinking about it earlier today. I was like, you know, as much as I love sports, and as much as I, you know, I applaud guys for, you know, gutting it out and getting out, you know, and staying after it. Your health and your family are, you know. That should always be number one. What good are you to your kids if you're at 30? If you're 35 and you're um, confined to a wheelchair half the day, mm. or you've got to spend 45 minutes every morning just stretching so that you can get up and take a leak. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at an <laughs> example of that, but look at Earl Campbell. Oh. Mm. oh. See? I was, just, you were just talking about that. He can barely walk. Barely walk. I was thinking. Jim McMahon once a week has to go have fluid drained off his brain. There you go. There's another guy. There's another one. Yeah. I love sports. Don't get me wrong. I love sports. Right. I love football. But in here, it's you know, walk away, man. It ain't worth it. Well, I guess some athletes just have that switch in them that tells them it's time. Uh, and I, I, I think that I think that there would I think there's a a direct link between susceptibility to CTE and talent at yeah. sports. Yeah. I, I think the better you are at sports, the more likely you are to suffer from CTE later in life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Longevity. Longevity could end up killing you. Basically. No, I'm talking, I'm talking about heredity. Oh, okay. Okay. I mm -hmm. think there's a heretical link between a sports ability. Obviously there's a, you know, like, if you're, I think the the long, I think the better you are of an athlete, the more likely you are to suffer from CTE later in life, and not just because you played longer or you were. But I think there's a link between pl being a good player, having skill and ability, and CTE. Yeah. yeah. I can't prove it. I'm no scientist. I ain't a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. But I think that there is a link. Between CTE and yeah ability, I, I believe not that. just you 
Excuse me. Yes, yeah. I drink something. I do drink things other than beer occasionally. <laughs> Obviously. Um, no, I, I, but, agree. I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, like, yeah. I can't prove it, and I don't have anything other than just my opinion. And I haven't looked at a study recently, yeah, on CTE, but I think that there's a direct link between ability at sports and CTE. I think the better you are at sport, the more likely you are to be a, a, a you, the more susceptible you are to CTE later in life yeah. beyond just the. Obviously, you know, the guy that plays one year and only plays, you know, and isn't really good, isn't going to see as ne- nearly as many violent collisions as the guy. But I think there's, I think there's a, you know, like when you take two guys who had 10 year careers in the NFL at a high level, both won a Super Bowl, both played, played, made deep playoff runs. I think that the player who is a better athlete is genetically more susceptible to CTE than the player who is lesser of an athlete. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think I figure that though because I thought maybe you know they're high class or anything and they and you know they're able to you know they had the strength of one night and they I thought most likely they wouldn't get it. I I, I don't know because I I've noticed that it seems to be players who are really good that always seem to end up with CTE. Mm. Guys like Junior Seau, yeah. you know, was he was considered one of the greatest linebackers, probably the greatest linebacker who never won a title. Yeah. No, no, he did win a title. Or did he win one with New England? Or did he not? Think, no, I don't think he won one. I think he, he left the team right before. Or, yeah, right. He, either right before they won. I think he got there right after they won their, their third one. Their three, yeah, the three P. Yeah. The three I, and four. I, I can say this. I remember the day they announced that he committed suicide, and I. Right. I felt sad. I mean, he was one of the greatest. Yeah. I got to see him, you know, when he first got drafted with the Chargers. And I thought, there's no one better at the linebacking position. I mean, LT, obviously, you could throw him in there. I mean, mm-hmm. they're great ones through the years. Singletary, obviously, jumps Lewis. out. Lewis. Lewis. Uh, Derek Brooks. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's been a bunch of them that have been Yeah, great. Brian Earl Acker. Uh, Earl Acker, yeah, as another one. Yeah. Um, but, I mean... Seau kind of set the mold for a lot of those guys from the Singletary uh, era down on the to, to what we have today. Who 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 is the top linebacker right now in the league? Is there anyone that jumps out at you guys as far as the top linebacker? I don't really know. If, is there one one out there? I don't. I don't know. I would think um, Shaquille Barrett. Hey, he's a linebacker. Is any out of Tampa? He plays. He plays defensive end too. He lines up on the other side of JPP. So, mm. uh, and I know they and the Bucks drafted Joe to, to Tryon in the first round. He's supposed to help JPP because obviously I think Jason Pierre-Paul probably in the last year or two of his career. Yeah, Tryon is going to be the guy that, that replaces him. Uh, so. But yeah, um, I guess you could probably throw him in that equation. I don't. I'm trying to think of all the linebackers in the league. I don't really know if there's one that jumps out at you. Um, I can't wait to see what Mika Peterson can do. Yeah. Yep. Out of Penn State. Who's the kid? Le- Notre- Levante. Who's the kid out of Notre Dame that got drafted? That's a linebacker. Oh, I don't remember his name. The Deontay the- Hightower. The one with the I think beard. Hightower. I can't wait to see him come back off of COVID. Oh, for the How old is this? Yeah. Okay, so this is a couple weeks ago. So this is P- 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 a- a PF- PFF Sam Mortensen, his top 30. Bobby Wagner at number one. Fred Warner at two out of San Francisco. Okay. Eric Kendricks out of Minnesota. Levante David, Tampa oh. Bay. Yep, about I one. think that's who I was think I was thinking of Levante David was the was the name I was trying to come up with. He just signed an extension with the Bucks. Mm-hmm. One of mm-hmm. their free agents. And yep. The one free agent that the Bucks haven't come to a long term deal yet is with Chris Godwin. He got I thought they got I thought did oh they maybe only they got a one year deal with him done. They're gonna have to put him on the tag. They're oh. gonna tag him. They'll tag him. 
and he'll they'll try to pay him next season. I don't know. Uh, the Bucks, you know, they got everybody back, but next year it'll be the same thing all over again. You know, unless you sign more than a one year contract, it's a, you know a lot of them sign bridge deals. You know, right, right. So Matt and Mario Milano. I don't know. I'm not sure how you're. So Levante David, he's got Levante David in his top three. Yeah, I forget. Top five. Him. He's fourth. Top five. Okay. Yeah. And he's got Demar Davis uh, out of New Orleans at six. Okay. Der- Denarius Leonard at, in Indianapolis, or he's got Davis at five, Leonard at six, Deion Jones at seven uh, for Atlanta. Raquan Smith uh, for Chicago at eight. Nine is Deontay Hightower. Uh, oh, I can't wait to see. I, I hope he can come back and be a pr- productive. They missed him last year. They so missed him last year in the middle. Defense, our defense was not that good last year. Mm-hmm. That was the weakness the Patriots had a lot was the defense. Yeah. Alexander Johnson at 10 for Denver. Matt Milano for Buffalo. Okay. Jalen Brown for Tennessee at 12. 13 is Zach Cunningham for Houston. And K.J. Wright is a free agent. He's 31. He last played in Seattle. Miles Jack at 15. Jacksonville. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's fallen off here in the last couple of years. Blake Martinez, New York. Devin Bush, Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, he... Hopefully he can he can improve on on that. Nick Kowarski, Kowatsky in the of the Raiders. Josie Jewell, ah, the Las Vegas Raiders. I don't know. That just has such a good ring to it. Can you talk about that for a second? Doesn't that just feel right? The Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the the Oakland Raiders, but I mean, it's just. You know, there's nothing. I if you were gonna move a team, could you imagine the the Las Vegas Jaguars? That's just <laughs> dumb and lame. Bad. That's not bad. I don't know. It's not nearly as good as the what Las about London Vegas Jaguars. When they want to move, they move to London, maybe. Don't yeah, eh, I don't know. Move to London. Uh, I think the London. If you're gonna move them to London, you gotta call them the Cougars, though. Yeah. Hey okay. yo! Okay. Hey yo! They might they might change it to that, so don't be surprised if that doesn't happen. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, maybe maybe they'll move them to Wales and they can call them the Red Dragons. <laughs> we just call them the Wales. No, I guess not. <laughs> the London. Wait, no. But uh, the London. No, I can't go there. Like, That'd be too much. The London Silly Nannies? No. Well, I mean, think about this. They came up with the Kraken in Seattle. They were gonna, they, there, there was a funny name going out that they were going to be called the Bitch Pigeon. So just think, <laughs> just think of that. I like that better. <laughs> I like that better. Just the think pigeon. of that as your NHL franchise uh, name. I want to start a minor league hockey team and call them the Bitch Pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, there's... There was a there was the a roller derby team that came down from Seattle that played the the roller derby. They were called the Trash Pandas, and it was trash a pandas. Oh, that, that, I love Trash Pandas though. I trash still... pandas, so there you go. So Wait, no. I I want to I want to have a night. I'm gonna, I want to have a promotional night where uh, you've heard of Bark at the Park. We'll get ready for a bitch at the rink. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it dirty? Why we was it dirty? We should we should have a show where we come on here and just make up just have the best stupid name. <laughs> oh yes, franchise. We do that next week. That would be fun. I'm, I'm down. One. I'm one. One. Lewis, just go thinking, ahead. Yeah, go I ahead. I was thinking whales, so I'm thinking what better than the king of all whales, the London Moby Dick. Okay, let's see. There you go. I like that. <laughs> oh, all right, let's do problem. that next. Let's do that next week. And we'll, we'll do five teams from each sport. How about that? Yeah. Well, there won't be a show next week because I have to work all week. I have to get oh, up dear. early, so there won't be a show next week. Okay. The following Thursday. So Sounds good. The Thursday, the 29th. 
We'll do it the 29th. We'll come we'll up. We'll do it live. Yeah, we'll come up with five different. You guys will live. I don't even do it. Five right. different. Well, yeah, five teams from each each sport. Sport. Come up with Sounds a. Sounds fun. A, yeah. We could do this we can do soccer too if you want. Yeah. We can do we could pick soccer if you want too. Speaking MLS. of soccer, I don't know if anybody's followed it, but um there was an interesting game of course last week in in the uh Euro uh Cup division. Uh, yes. Oh yeah. Italy. 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 Yeah, Italy yes. England. Mm. Yes, they did. I did see that. So I was, right. you know what's funny, Lewis? I was out Saturday night with friends yeah. at Bar hopping, which again I don't drink, so again bear with me when I say this. We're watching the semifinal game that Italy was in. Somebody goes, "Is that the final?" I go, "No." I said, "It's between England and, and Italy tomorrow." I said, "The game hasn't even started yet. It's going to be tomorrow morning." You don't know what you're talking about. I go, "Look it up." I said, "Italy is playing England in the Euro final." I said, "Trust me." Are you? Sure? I said, "You're asking a sports guy a sports question." What are you talking? Right. About? You're asking a sports guy a sports question. I'm telling you the answer. It's tomorrow morning. It's Italy versus England. That's I know. Right, mm-hmm. right. I mean, English. Like summer- we literally just we literally just talked about this on Thursday night. Do I need yeah. to refer you to the YouTube channel? Yes. Yeah. England- from from now on, from now on, we need to bookmark every single segment. And then when somebody asks you a stupid ass question, you'll be like, yeah. "Here, you're wrong." So, uh, <laughs> fast, fast forward to to one thirty of the thing, and we'll we'll be talking about it. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. One thirty to the one forty-five mark. The exact topic you're talking about was discussed. right. So. I, I, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, it's funny for me. Uh, like, I don't mind admitting when I'm wrong. I mean, I, I don't like it, but I'm not like one of those a holes. It's like, oh no, I'm not wrong. And I'm like, oh, you were right. I was wrong. Oh well. Right. Well, I'm guys. We have, but we have like. Eight minutes, what? seven minutes left. If you guys have Ugh, any final thoughts or anything you missed, um, I think we got everything in that I wanted to get in for we sure. For sure. About Conor McGregor. Uh, about McGregor, if you want to go into that, I, I was the, that was incredibly disappointing. Yes, of course. I I don't I don't like when they when they give somebody a, an you know when a guy has an injury and they give the other guy a win. Yeah. Honestly, I thought it should have been a no contest. Especially when you're fighting dirty. Well, then again, uh, you know, it's UFC. Of course, you're going to fight dirty. Well, I mean, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I mean, with the way that Connor is, I don't, I won't be surprised he's going to come back and face Poirier one more time before he hangs it up. I, that's just, is, yeah. You're never, you're never I wouldn't either. McGregor again. That, he's done with that. I mean, you know, I think, I don't think he's done necessarily, you know, when fighting. But he's never going to be the dominant fire he once was. No, I don't think no. so either. And that's even if he can get a cl- get medical clearance to come back and fight. Right, he's got to get. He'll find a way. He's got to get clear to come back to fight. Yep. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think I think Judge gets moved at the deadline. Aaron Judge. Yeah, Good night, folks. Wow. I think they blow it up and start over. Wow. In New York? Yeah. Wow. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I think they blow it up and start over. Work. I think I think I think if they go if 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 they still struggle after at, at, by the beginning of August, I think Boom gets the axe and they blow it up. I was gonna say if they if they're trained if they're if they're um uh, sellers, then it, Boone's fired. <laughs> yeah, Boone's. I, I just. Yeah, I, I, I think this series against the Sox will really. Well, what are they? How many games are they back of Boston right now? Nine. Seven, eight, oh. nine. Yeah, if they go. If they lose three out of the four, yeah, I would say you blow it up because it's. Yeah, they're all. I mean, they're already on edge, and because they're they're in fourth place, right? They're behind the Blue Jays, right? right. Yeah, and they're. Only three. They're eight games back, three games over 500. Three games it's over still 500. doable, though. I mean, you got eight teams. Well, yeah. It, I, mean, yeah. The Marlins, I mean, the Nationals did it, so who's to say they can't do it? But it all depends on this next on this next two-week stretch. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, because if they – because they've got eight games against the, the Sox, I think is what I saw. Yes. Yep. 
four in New York. Of course, we're going to get some rain out, so I can maybe screw it up, too. So you got uh, seven, and you got three. Yeah, three this weekend. Um, New York and four in Boston, or is it four in New York and three in New York? It's it's four in it's three in New York, four in Boston. Oh, so they're playing in Fenway four times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they have they have three against three in New York this weekend, and then they have a two game set with the Phillies this weekend or the beginning of next week. And then, then they go to Boston for four, and then they go to Tampa to close out the uh, their their the their deadline game is the Marlins. Oh, that's funny. They'll be playing against their former great player as the the owner of the Marlins. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yes, the cheater. And then they got three against. They've got so they've got a chance. They got eight games. Or, or 12, 10 games. Let's see, 3 and 7 is 10. 13 games. And their next 15 games are against division opponents, which they're all trailing. Yeah. I may. I Now that they're, now that they're playing the race, I may I may go to a game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I drop a can of field. Now, I think that's what I saw. Prices, ticket prices go up when the Red Sox and Yankees are here than they are when they're right. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of ticket prices going up, my dad wants to go see a Michigan game this year, uh-huh. and um, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how I can swing getting up there and getting back and not losing my job. Um, uh-huh. I, you know, um, but um, uh-huh. we're looking at going to the uh, Illinois Northern Illinois game because. The Wisconsin, the Washington game tickets are one hundred thirty one. Start at one hundred thirty one dollars and go from there. Northern Illinois starts at thirty three dollars and goes from there. Hmm. Yeah, I was, I was actually blood checking on tickets for the Florida Florida State game. Mm. So, because I have, the guy that I'm going to watch the pay per view with on Sunday, he's an FSU fan and he wants to go uh, to the Florida Florida State game. Okay. Tickets. Tickets have started at one hundred and twenty dollars, and that's in the no section. That's not section. bad. That's not bad. So, but I am going to the outdoor game next year when the Lightning play the Predators. Okay. Titans. So I will. I def. I we are going. Um, with tickets for sure. For sure. That, for sure. For sure. That is that is a definite. So next okay. year I'll let you know when that date is, and I'll make plans to run a car and I'll come see you. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, you can fly. I would say just fly into Chattanooga. I'll, uh, what, what is that game on a Sunday? Saturday. Saturday. It's just Saturday. fly into Chattan- Chattanooga on Friday. We'll hang out. I'll get a ticket. We'll go to the game on Saturday. And then we'll just drive back here and you can fly out Sunday. Well, it'll be, it'll be my roommate will be with me. So mm. it'll be the two of us that will fly. You, got, you guys both fly up, fly up here and. We'll hang out all day Friday. Well, yeah, that's we were gonna we were gonna fly up but Thursday night. We're gonna fly okay. Thursday yeah. night. Wake up yeah, yeah. morning, hang out Friday in the city. Saturday we were gonna okay. go to the team and then Sunday we were gonna kind of do a little bit more sightseeing and then Monday mm. we're gonna fly home. That was the game plan. Okay. So that's okay. We'll have to work that out. Yeah. Because because Nashville's only a two hour drive from here. Okay. It's like two and a half hours. That's so what I was thinking. I was thinking is if you wanted to fly to, to Chattanooga, I could pick you up from the airport. Okay. And then and then you come back and we can you can get a hotel room here, um, Friday. Or if you wanted to, I could you could fly in Thursday Thursday night get a hotel room here Thursday night, and then we'll both we'll all get up and go to Nashville on Friday. Yeah. And hang out in Nashville for a couple of days. Drive back here on. On Sunday, you all can fly out Sunday, and then I'll go home on Sunday night. That could be worked out. I will let I'll, I'll let him know. Mm. Right? Yeah. Uh, Unless you wanted to fly fly in Thursday afternoon, and I'll just pick you up from the airport, and because I don't know what your work schedule is going to look like, because because yeah. you said you you know if we could work it out, I'd love to take you to the cigar bar here in town. That'd be really cool. It probably would be but Thursday night because I work till four thirty in the afternoon. Okay. Guessing, I didn't know if you want if you would be able to take a Thursday off. off or not. Well, being that I'm taking Friday off, Friday and probably Monday, I try to limit yeah. my vacation yeah. days. 
Uh, right, right. You don't want to burn through all of them in February. Right. No. Right. Well, and then on top of that, I think next year for our, our my my family vacation, I think we are going to Pigeon Forge. Okay. Let that's me know. There. So that'll be I'll be that's like an hour week. from here. I'll be up there for a whole week. So okay. that I'll be that way I have a lot more time on my hands to do things. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, is there anything else real quick, guys, you wanna I'm good. Uh, talk about anybody and you want to pitch a show before we get off here i don't know if i'm having a show this weekend or not okay. um so i may or may not be all right well i don't want to make promises and then not be able to deliver yeah pitching for is only two hours from here okay. well guys uh this has been the walker report part of in the zone sports talk radio kim guys if you want to get some gear head over to squadlocker.com and type in in the zone sports talk radio to present the store uh, for you to order your gear, we are sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com. It's the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, and cluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you, adding comfort to your life. And remember, Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. And guys, if you missed this show, wanted to see its entirety, it will be on the Sports Nerd Bradley Walker YouTube channel. And please like, subscribe, and share over there, guys. I will be on my Regular Friday show for the first time. I was under the weather on Sunday. That's why I didn't have a show last week. Mm. Be on tomorrow. Uh, night. Yeah. Um, I will be on tomorrow, and I don't have anything going on uh, that will get in the way of <laughs> my show tomorrow night. So there will be a Sunshine State Sports Shabber if you guys want to join. I'll be there in progress. I'll see you guys then tomorrow. Um, but guys, like I always do, thanks to our first responders. Uh, you know, our firefighters, paramedics, uh, police officers, thank you. To the men mm. and women of our armed services, thank you guys for doing what you do. We wouldn't be able to do this without you guys doing what you do. Absolutely. So thank you very much. Uh, I love everybody out there. Thank you for coming in and joining us. We enjoy all the company that we get. These two gentlemen make this show so great uh, to do every Thursday. Um, again, guys, I'll be back tomorrow night. But everyone else out there, you know, Keep doing what you're doing. Stay safe, obviously. That's the number one key out there. Uh, but until next week, well, there won't be a show, guys, next week because I have a long okay. week. Um, but there will be the show will be back on the and guys, we're gonna have a fun show on the 29th. We are going to name five outlandish what? team names from each uh major uh league. So be ready for that. It's gonna be funny. Should be fun. Um We'll have to, I, I, it's, I'm going to see, it's going to be cool. It's going to give me two weeks to think about this. So this is going to yeah. be interesting. Uh, right. Two weeks to figure out what we're going to do, but guys join in that show. Cause it should be hilarious. We, every once in a while, we have a good good one. Really that night, though. every once in a while, we have a show like that where we don't talk about sports news. We just, you know, bullshit and come up with weird shit. And that's what we do. Yeah. yeah. It's a, yeah. Those are my, those are some of my favorite shows. Yes. So, just uh, um, put the kids to bed early that night. Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. Or let them stay up. You know, I really don't care. I, you're the parent, not me. <laughs> but I, again, this has been the walk report. I am the sports of Bradley Walker. I will see you guys in about two weeks. Until then, guys, peace. This right. is good night and good luck.